Good evening. This meeting will be held on Zoom and there will be a live broadcast of the Northwest Planning Advisory Committee meeting on YouTube. I will now uh, call the meeting to order and read the land acknowledgement. The Halifax Regional Municipality is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The municipality acknowledges the peace and friendship treaties signed in this territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. We'll now have the roll call and I'll ask members to introduce yourselves as I call your name. I'll begin with Councillor Kathy Deagle-Gammon. Good evening, everyone. Um, representing District 1, Waverly, Fall River, Muscadabit Valley and happily showing the tartan for uh, National Tartan Day. Thank you. Councillor Tim Outhead. Good evening, Madam Chair and colleagues uh, from uh, sunny, beautiful Bedford, Wentworth. <laughs> uh, Gina Jones-Wilson. Good evening, Madam Chair, Gina Jones-Wilson, Upper Hammonds Plains. Thank you. Jacqueline Lever. And I should have said Vice Chair Jacqueline Lever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Lever and I uh, live in Bedford. Thank you. Donalda McIsaac. Oh. Donalda was here. She seems to have disappeared. Okay, we'll move along and uh, Stacy Rutterham is uh, has given our her regrets for this evening. Mark Backerdax. Good evening, Madam Chair and colleagues. Coming to you from beautiful downtown Hubley, Nova Scotia. <laughs> and Trevor Ennis. Good evening, Madam Chair. I'm uh, coming to you live from the sunny part of Beaverbank. <laughs> and I'm Ann Merritt, the chair. Uh, staff members that are present uh, are planner Melissa Evis, Alicia Wall, our legislative support, Andrea Lavasi Wood, our legislative assistant, and Eric Bowdridge, a legislative, legislative assistant. My tongue is still asleep. Okay, we'll go on to the approval of the minutes of March 2nd, 2022. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of March 2nd, please? And please state your name when you... It's Mark Ackerdex, all motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Okay, I need a seconder for that motion. Uh, Gina Jones-Wilson, I'll second that. Okay, thank motion. you. It's been moved by Mark and seconded by Gina. Uh, are there any errors or omissions? Thank you. I'll now call for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, nay. Motion is carried. We'll move on to approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. I will ask the clerk are there, if there are any additions or modifications to the agenda. Hi, Chair Merritt. Uh, there's no additions or deletions to tonight's agenda. Thank you. Uh, do, does anyone on the committee have any modifications that they would like to make? Uh, Madam Chair, it's Tim, just quickly. Uh, Andrea, were you or Kelly or somebody going to give a little bit of an update uh, on yes. some news yes. of the chair? Do yes. we need to add that to the agenda or can we just do yeah. that in the chair's comments? Or I'm just going to do it after the approval to uh, the okay. order after of business this is approved. Yeah. 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 All good. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay, can I have an motion then to approve the agenda as it was circulated? Approved, Madam Chair. Councillor uh, Daigle Gammon. Thank you. A seconder, Councillor Outhead. Moved in by Councillor Gam Daigle Gammon and seconded by Councillor Outhead that the uh, agenda be approved. All in favor, aye. 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 Contrary aye. minded, nay. Motion is carried. And now I'm going to turn this section of the meeting over to Andrea just for a few minutes. She has 
something she wants to share with us. Uh, thank you, Chair Merritt. Um, so as some of our committee members may have heard today, new legislation was introduced by the province uh, today that proposes to suspend planning advisory committees for a period of three years. This legislation is in its early stages and is not currently in effect. We are working with our colleagues to determine the impacts of this legislation if it becomes law. We will keep the committee updated. So thank you very much, Chair Merritt. That is uh, the update that I wish to provide. Okay, thank you. And we will not be discussing this at this time. So we will move along then to <clears throat> yeah, business arising out of the minutes. And I believe there's none. Call for the declaration of conflict of interest. Anyone having any conflict of interest with the proposal we're going to look at tonight needs to declare it now. Hearing none, I'll assume there are none. Uh, consideration of deferred business, we have none. Correspondence, petitions and delegations. Have we received any correspondence, Madam Clerk? Uh Madam Chair, we have not, uh, the clerk's office has not received correspondence for this meeting as well. We haven't received any petitions. Thank you very much. Then petitions, have we any petitions? Clerk? Uh, Chair Merritt, there were no petitions received by the clerk's office. Thank you. And there are no presentations. There are no information items brought forward, so we will go immediately now to reports and 911 case 23293, Beaver Bank Road and Windgate Drive in Beaver Bank. This is, will be presented by Melissa Evis. Whenever you're ready, Melissa. Thank you, Chair. Does everyone see my screen? Yes. So good evening, Chair, uh, for the Northwest and um, community, uh, sorry, PAC members. Uh, my name is Melissa Evis, and tonight I'll be presenting case 23293, which is an application for a development agreement at, in Beaver Bank. So the applicant is WM Fairs Architects on behalf of the property owners, Holy Trinity Pastoral Unit. The location is Beaver Bank Road in Beaver Bank. And the, um, it's for a multi-unit apartment building. The broader site context is shown here on the left and circled in red. Uh, it is located east of Beaver Bank Road near the intersection of Wingate Drive. Uh, this area is mostly low density residential with more commercial uh, uses concentrated along the Beaver Bank Road near the application site. Uh, the more immediate site context is shown on the right. Uh, to the north and east are vacant lands, including a disused HRM road reserve. Uh, to the west across Beaver Bank Road is Barrett Firewood and Barrett Lumber Company. And to the immediate west is a single unit dwelling. And uh, to the south is vacant land and a low density residential community beyond that. So this is an aerial image of the site looking east and you can see the single family dwelling located here. And this is an image of the site looking west toward the Beaver Bank Road. And this is a street view of the site uh, at the frontage on the Beaver Bank Road. So in terms of the proposal, the proposal is for a single building, four and a half stories tall, approximately 19 meters in height. Um, they've proposed 46 units, a mix of one and two bedroom apartments, 52% uh, two bedrooms, no three bedroom apartments proposed. Driveway access is proposed off of the Beaver Bank Road. Um, there are 68 parking spaces, um, which results in a bit of ratio of 1.4 spaces per unit. Uh, there are 32, uh, surface spaces and then 36 would be located internal to the building. 
Uh, there's additional landscaping and fencing has been proposed to act as a buffer between uh, the development and the proposed and the existing single family dwelling next door. Uh, the details of this landscaping are still being finalized, but essentially will consist of a fence, an opaque fence and some trees or, and um, soft landscaping. These are some renderings of the building as provided by the applicant. Um, so what do policies apply to this site in particular? First, the property is zoned R6, which is the rural residential zone within the Sackville land use bylaw. This zone allows single unit dwellings, daycare facilities, bed and breakfasts, home occupations. It also allows some resource uses such as agricultural and forestry uses, fishing uses, uh, open space and institutional uses are also permitted under the zone as of right. Uh, the property is designated urban residential under the Sackville uh, Municipal Planning Strategy. Um, and there are currently no existing uses on the property, it's vacant. The enabling policy that allows council to consider this proposal is UR8 under the Sackville Planning Strategy. So when applying uh, policy UR8, council must consider the following, uh, that the separation, distance, separation distance between the proposed development and the low density residential community surrounding it, uh, the appearance of the building and its compatibility with adjacent uses, uh, that the site design addresses impacts of the development, um, the proximity to community facilities, uh, the availability of services, uh, if controls to address environment, environmental concerns are needed, um, that there is direct access to a local street, um, the existing use of the property, which is in this case would be vacant, um, the traffic consider considerations and general maintenance. In terms of engagement, the level of engagement completed was consultation through a mail notification and a public information meeting, which was held on March 9th. Um, feedback from the community generally included the following. Uh, the development is not in keeping with the character of the community. We're losing a sense of nature in Beaver Bank. It's a big city look and feel. Traffic is a concern. Um, the availability of amenities such as schools, uh, privacy for nearby residents, um, that they would like to see more three bedroom units, and that there are no apartments to rent in the area, so it would be a welcome addition. Notifications mailed out were 450. Uh, I received a combination of emails and phone calls, totaling nine. Um, our website for the application had 1,150 unique page views, uh, and the virtual public information meeting was attended by five people. Uh, so now I'll turn it back over to the committee uh, for their comment. Please advise of any recommendations and considerations regarding the proposal, taking into account those NPS policies I mentioned and I've summarized here on this slide. Okay, thank you very much, Melissa. And we will now go to the committee members for their questions and comments. And we'll start with Gina Jones-Wilson. Uh, sorry. Uh... No, to me, um, looked uh, it looked fine. Uh, Sackville is an is an area that uh, could use more uh, uh, apartment buildings, as there's quite a few families. I'm not familiar with the schools and uh, the attendance or how much it is, so I couldn't comment on that. But uh, uh, I like the look, the style of the buildings, and uh, and that it's the apartments don't seem to be close to uh, a lot of residential homes that are in the area. So uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. Thank you. And then to Jacqueline Lever. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, overall, it seems like it might fit a need for additional housing in the area. Um, I see it's not too far from the Avery Farmer's Market, just up past that, I think, just is, is what I could find on the map. Um, whereas I, I don't remember if I heard through the presentation, I'm just wondering if I can add, ask whether traffic um, from the city looked into whether it's not a very big building, but whether there's any concerns about uh, the road that exists for handling 
the traffic of uh, a small building like that. Okay, Melissa, would you like to answer her question? Sure, so we've had our development engineer who they distribute the application to our traffic folks and they've reviewed the TIS and the proposal and they haven't found any issues with it. Thank you. Is that it for you, Jacqueline? I guess I kind of wondered if there was, do we ever get any idea when we're looking at these, it hits my mind more now, but on, do they ever give an estimate of what the cost would be? Like, do they give a, a range of what they would look at to charge all those apartments? Like, is that part of what they need to submit? Melissa? Not usually. So usually those things don't come into play. It's not a part of our requirements. Uh, we don't look at affordability in terms of asking them if they're condos or rentals or how much they would charge. Um, and if the applicant is usually available at the pen, they can sometimes speak to that. Um, in this case, I don't think that was brought up as to their affordability of the units. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. And Donalda, Donalda McIsaac. I have to apologize for popping in note. I guess kept getting knocked up. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have a problem with it. I think the project itself looks good. I'm always concerned where there's traffic and you're adding a large amount of traffic and we're adding to the traffic flow. But outside of the traffic issue, I don't really have an issue with the building. I would just hope eventually that we would someday be sitting here approving affordable housing that we know that people could actually afford to move into. But outside of that, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, thank you. Mark Backerdux. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think I'm of a similar um, mindset on this one that it seems to be in, you know, kind of a unique uh, location that suits it uh, with respect to a multi tenant building. And I'm, I guess I'm just looking at the pictures and thinking, um, you know, that there is a little bit of a uh, down, downward slope into the residential area there. So certainly um, there would be, need to be consideration from a septic uh, system perspective to make sure that there's no uh, runoff of, uh, of any of the um, supporting systems there. Okay, uh, would that be serviced land, Melissa? That's correct. So this is fully serviced by city water and sewer. Um, and that's a requirement for the apartment, apartment buildings out here. Um, and at the time of building permit is when we'll take a real deep dive into their stormwater plan and that will have to follow the HRM uh, regulations in terms of stormwater pre and post flows and that kind of thing. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Trevor Ennis. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, as far as the look and the aesthetics of it, uh, I, uh, I'm not opposed to that. Um, one thing that the pictures don't show is the entrance of the parking lot. And I'm wondering if there's any possibility that the uh, planners are able to uh, shift it slightly more up the road. As it is, it's uh, coming out right across the bank from a, a slightly downgraded hill going into another area. Um, and I'm just wondering if that would be a factor as far as site views of vehicles leaving the building onto the main road. Um, and by moving it slightly up the road, I'm thinking that it may give that uh, current homeowner a little bit more space from that driveway to their driveway. And I'm just wondering if those are things that have been uh, taken into account. Melissa? Uh, so the, um, the TIS would have looked at the location of the driveway in terms of its access, uh, acceptability um, for site stopping distance and those kind of things. I don't believe they own the property next door so to move the driveway into, you know, like if you look at property ownership, they only have uh, that much frontage on Beaver Bank Road. Is that, was that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Trevor? Uh, yeah, more or less. Now, as far as the traffic studies go, uh, it, I think they may have been looking mainly at the uh, traffic going up and down Beaver Bank. I don't know if they were considering the uh, 
the drive, the private driveway on the other side of the road going down over the bank. Uh, I know that there's some mailboxes down there and bus, buses stop there every day, um, school buses. So I'm just, I'm just concerned that uh, there might be some issues with vehicles going up and down that hill being seen by uh, cars leaving the building. Yeah, we can definitely ask the development engineer to double check the site stopping distances um, in terms of that driveway entrance. Okay, that good, Trevor? Yes, it is. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kathy Deagle Gammon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Busy writing notes. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the three units look fine, and they actually mirror some of the ones that are just further down the road. Um, so, so in terms of you know being in a fit with the community, it's good. I'm I'm more concerned really about the in the same way about the traffic. So I live in Fall River. I will come back through Wingate and sometimes go onto the Beaver Bank Road, and uh, that T intersection has a lot of troubles. That is where the train tracks are. Um, the traffic is backed up continuously. And I don't think in uh, almost two years I've, or before, seen a traffic study that has ever said that there's a problem. Traffic <laughs> studies seem to always say that everything is just fine. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality, and those of us that live it, <laughs> are going to say not so much. So, you know, I, I did read, um, uh, Thea, who's here, sent me a beautiful article on how to look at uh, uh, traffic studies. So I'll share it with the group if you would like. Um, so it's risk just that the roads can handle the, the cars, it doesn't talk in any way about driver behavior or anything like that. And so um, just at those lights in the, in the at that intersection, at that T intersection and the absence of a set of lights, traffic lights, it is going to be a dangerous spot that you've got, you know, 46 units. So at least 46 cars plus in and out adding onto the Beaver Bank Road. Uh, I do see that as, a, as an issue. I do know from Councillor Blackburn that the schools, you know, are uh, overcrowded in the area. And I know that they're one and two bedroom. So that might not be a family sized units kind of thing. But um, but yeah, the, the traffic engineers, if if there's any way to say to have a look to make sure how do how do we make that the safest possible? Um, yeah, so that that would be my only concern there is it is about the traffic. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Otis. Um, thank you. And it's so good to have people from the community uh, on the committee. So I, I was listening to Trevor's comments and, of course, to, to Kathy's, because uh, as long as I've been on council, I know my colleagues from both school districts have had concerns about traffic on Cobblequid, but more, I think, about the sidewalks and crosswalks, of course, when you look at uh, where the, the nursing home is there. And I can't even think of the name of it at the moment. But anyway. Um, so just a, a quick question, and I got distracted for a moment here, uh, Melissa, so I'm sorry if I missed this. Uh, sidewalks, in, are they, do they go that far up on Cobbacquid or no, they don't? Okay. So, and requesting a sidewalk then wouldn't be any help because there'd be nothing to connect it to, I guess. Then. So. Let me take a um, look here, just one second. Yeah, I, I probably should look. Just quickly while she's doing that, uh, several have mis mentioned affordable housing. And um, I think we will get to the state where, uh, I don't know if this committee is going to be around or not, but if this committee was, is still be around, where we will, uh, because we're, we were given inclusionary rezoning as, a, as something we can use with the, uh, for, by the province, meaning that we can force developers to put affordable units into their projects, uh, is something that will be coming. And secondly, the only time we would really discuss the, the rents is if, we, if it was being um, uh, presented as affordable units through what's known as bonus density down on the uh, on the peninsula. They, uh, people can apply, developers can apply for a dense, additional height or density in exchange for making some affordable units. Unfortunately, that doesn't apply yet in the suburban and rural areas, but we're, we're working on that as well. So just a little FYI for the, uh, for the folks because they brought up a very good question about affordable housing. So what's the answer on sidewalks, Melissa, sorry? Yes, there is sidewalks in front of the development. 
There is. Okay. So, because I know that used to be a very big issue for my colleagues uh, a little further down the road there. So, uh, so I'll add my support to the, the concerns about traffic and schools, but I mean, recently the province ruled that we couldn't consider schools uh, avail availability, uh, availability really, because we, we used that for a reason to reject a, uh, a proposed project in Indigo Shores and the province has decided to make that part of the, the nine sites that they want to uh, expedite. So, Unfortunately, I don't know that saying anything about the schools would be uh, of any benefit, but uh, we can certainly add in comments about traffic if you choose to, would be my thoughts. Anyway, so that's it for me, Madam Chair, and, uh, and thank you, Melissa, for the presentation. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Madam Chair, my may I ask one more question? I apologize. Uh, yes. Councillor Gavin, was that you? Yeah. yeah, it was. Sorry, thanks. Um, sometimes when I've you know, sort of been walking by there, it, is there any wetland? There is it a bog or anything, or is it just all? So we've asked them this question as well. This was brought up through our review. Uh, right. And they've, they've, I believe the answer has been no, but let me just double check. I think the answer has been no. They, there is no wetlands on this, the front portion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have any secondary questions they want to throw out there? Okay, well, I am with the people that are worried about the traffic there. I know that there is a bend in the road when you come, the cars that are coming out of, of uh, what do they call it now, Windgate. Um, it's very hard to see what's coming down the road at them. And it would be the same from that building, probably. Um, they may have a little better view, but I don't think it's going to be much better because the road curves and there is a really big building right on the corner across on the on the far side of Wingate that sort of blocks your view. We have talked about the fact that lights are needed there because of other development going on up that road. And we were told that that wasn't possible because the railway tracks were there and the road didn't belong to the city, it belonged to the railroad. The railroad tracks aren't there anymore. So what is the status of the road? And I really think that in all fairness to everyone who lives there now and who's going to move there, we have to keep pushing for traffic lights at that intersection because it is very, very, very difficult to get out of the end of Wingate before you've even got the other developments that are being built up there coming through. And um, yeah, Councillor Digo Gammon says she can tell us a little bit about the railway business. So if you would like to do that, I'd appreciate it. Great, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yes, the... Um... Uh, Councillor Blackburn and I have been uh, keeping tabs with CN about the uh, in railway tracks there. Uh, in the spring, they did a patchwork on the, the tracks and they're going to do a, a full recapitalization uh, very soon. Um, but in terms of us getting traffic lights, right now it is for the courts. And until it is resolved in the ports, then we won't be able to do anything around traffic lights. There is a, a problem there between the province and CN and the American owners. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> but I think we still need to note that in our recommendation that that is a bad intersection that may be made, maybe won't be made worse by the apartment building, but the people in the apartment buildings may suffer because of it. And as much as it's, uh, <clears throat> it's not going to be easy to get out of there at any time of the day because just to add a little bit of <laughs> human interest, I used to have a hairdresser that lived on the Beaverbank Road. <laughs> I no longer go there because I couldn't get back out again to come home. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things. But, okay, um, I will now ask for a motion. Um, we can uh, approve as it stands. Oh, 
and Trevor, did you want to, uh, did you have another question? You had your no, hand up I, for a while. No, I didn't have another question. I, I, at the time, I was just going to uh, uh, mention about the uh, wetlands. Uh, it wasn't in this area where the site is, but across, across the street where the Barrett Lumber Yard um, is located, there used to be uh, a wet area that they have since allowed to dry down to the, to the bed. So uh, it's not an issue with this site. Okay, great. Okay, and I will now call for someone to uh, make a motion and we can either move that it be approved as it stands. We can ask that it be approved with recommendations and we can decide what those recommendations would be. I think probably traffic concerns. Uh, the, or we can, ask that it be declined, and we still have to give reasons for that. So, Trevor? I just wanted to recognize Melissa has her uh, hand up there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to add to Trevor's um, comment with the wetlands. I found our review of the wetlands. There is a portion at the back of the site that's wet. Um, that they think might be wet. So through the course of the application, when it comes in for permit, they'll have to get a, um, a permit from Nova Scotia Environment to alter that if it is found to be a wetland. Uh, it's not where the building it is, it's more uh, south or southwest. Um, but I just want to put that on the record. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, did someone want to make that motion? <laughs> Oh, somebody has to. I I'll, will make, I'll make a motion. Oh, sorry, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Uh, Jacqueline, would you like to make the motion then? I'll make a motion that the uh, the development that we would approve the development agreement, but that we would like to state our uh, worries or our concerns. Sorry, with about traffic, and that the um the you know that we look at ways at making that safe for everyone be it a light or something else that uh, that the city can can look at so the concerns for traffic need should be addressed as the building goes up okay All right and trevor would you like to second that i'll second that motion okay moved by jacqueline and seconded by trevor that we approve the uh, project with recommendations that the traffic situation on Beaver Bank Road be taken into consideration. Is that uh, about Ma Ma Madam Chair, just a thought, the traffic situation, so we don't think, and Melissa can probably guide this through, but yeah. we don't want it to think it's the traffic volume as much, because I think that the, the TIS the studies dealt with that, but I think maybe a little bit more prescriptive on whether it's the, the need for the lights or the visibility okay. of getting out of the site. Okay. We might want to massage those words just a bit. Okay, I will call on Alicia to tell us what she has. Yes, hi, Madam Chair. Good evening, everybody. Um, so what I have is that the Northwest Planning Advisory Committee has reviewed the application for case 23293 and recommends approval of the application with consideration given to traffic mitigation and installing lights at the intersection of Wingate Drive and Beaver Bank Road. Is that, that satisfactory to everybody? I'm not sure what you mean by traffic mitigation. Traffic mitigation would be reducing the numbers in my mind. Again, I thought we were concerned with visibility of the location of this development. So Light lines. Maybe Trevor has thoughts yeah. on that, I don't know. Yeah. I, I was uh, going to suggest an egress uh, and entrance into the driveway. Okay. Maybe just language to review the location of the driveway to ensure that it's meeting safety. Okay. Yeah, keep it simple. That's great. Okay, Alicia, you've got that correction? I do, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We've had a motion made by moved by Jacqueline and seconded by Trevor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? I'm not hearing any contrary minded, so motion is carried. Okay. 
we are actually at the end of our agenda for tonight. And our next meeting will be May 4th, 2022, maybe. <laughs> and it will be again virtually, I do believe. Is that correct, uh, Clerk? Um, I, I believe so, Madam Chair. Um, we can just, yes, virtually. Yeah, okay. Okay, then with there's nothing else we need to discuss tonight. I will ask for a motion to adjourn, please. I'll move adjourn with my thanks to everybody and you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Moved by Tim, Councillor Tim, <laughs> and seconded by Donalda McIsaac. So, sure. Yeah. It's been seconded by Donalda. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 I'm chair. Aye. I'm chairman. Just before Aye. we adjourn. I just wanted to recognize uh, Andrea's uh, transition going over to uh, Eric uh, so that we have that on the record. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> if we're not around, I don't know what that says about Eric, though, it doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's off camera now. There he is. Yeah, so I just popped giving, on. <laughs> they're, they're giving you a committee that may disappear. I don't know how you view that, but anyway. Yeah.